Hello and welcome to the fifth episode of the fifth CPSA How to Hit series, sponsored by Browning and filmed here at the National Clay Shooting Centre at Bisley. In this episode, we're going to be covering the rules and regulations of Olympic trap. In previous videos, we've covered down the line, progressed onto automatic ball trap, and now we're moving on to Olympic trap, regarded as the pinnacle of clay shooting. With me today is Steve Scott, a Olympic bronze medalist and Commonwealth gold medalist. Um, he got bronze medal in double trap in Rio 2016. And Steve's going to explain the ins and outs of Olympic trap uh, since he is a current shooter and also a coach for up and coming shooters and the British pathway. Welcome Steve. Can you please explain what we have here? Yep. So here we have the Olympic trap set up with 15 traps. Each stand will have one left, one right, and one relatively straight target. It could be a little bit off, but more or less along the line. And we will have um, two lefts, two rights, and one straight from each stand to complete the complete course of 25 targets. How many schemes are there? There are nine schemes within Olympic trap. So they vary from um, some relatively low ones to some that sit a bit higher. Um, some present a little bit more challenging targets than others, but there's um, nine schemes. They will vary depending on which ground you go to and which ground put on certain schemes on that particular day. And how far are these clays flying? These clays fly um, 76 metres from where they take off, give or take a metre. Obviously, um, it's wind dependent, but they're set flying, I think it's around between 61 and 63 miles per hour at which they leave the trap. A little bit quick, yeah. The Olympic trap is very similar to automatic ball trap that we discussed in the previous episode. Um, in terms of it's shot in squads of six, the shooting stations are in a straight line and it's a shoot and move sequence. Again, uh, rounds of 25. Big differences are the fact that we have 15 traps in the trench out there. And I'm gonna ask Steve um, to explain certain aspects of Olympic trap to make it easier to understand and break it down. So first thing, Steve, I mentioned earlier on about the yellow gun hold point on every shooting station. Can you explain what is beneath that hold point, please? Yeah. So every station has their hold point, as Simon explained. Um, underneath that hold point, there is three designated traps for this station. So you will have one left, one right, and one relatively straight target. It will vary within five degrees. Excellent, so each station has three traps, one left, one right, gun ahead. Are they all set the same? or is every of the 15 traps different? Uh, the 15 traps are different, they're all set in different heights and angles. They vary from 40, or they go from zero to all the way out to 45 degrees to the left, and the same 45 degrees to the right. They also vary in height, so they will go from 0.5 meters at 10 meters away, um, all the way up to three meters. That flight line of the target, you'd be shooting it about 18 to 20 meters out there, so that will get a good 20, 25 meters in the air sometimes before you shoot it, so they will vary quite a bit. And as the shooters are going around the sequence, they don't know what's coming next? No. Um, Ian Peel, uh, Olympic silver medalist, um, he's uh, quite a clever chap, he does count. So you can do a sort of counting system where you you definitely know your last five, you could know a couple out of your last 10. But basically how it works is you'll get two lefts, two rights and a straight, as I mentioned earlier. Um, your sequence is individual to you on that particular round. But if you, for instance, to give you an example, if I shoot station one now and I get a left target, I come around again, shoot station one again, and I have a straight target, and I come around again and I get a left target. So, that, so, so far I've had two lefts and a straight, I will be left with two right targets. So therefore I know my last two targets out, my last 10. So if you're clever enough to work that one out, kudos to you, I can't do that. Um, but if you are, um, and still maintain your shooting ability, you will have a slight advantage maybe, but um, I like to simplify and just shoot whatever comes out the hole. Shooting shooters, yeah. yeah. Is there any difference between the guns used for down the line to Olympic trap? Um, ballistically, so your ballistic setup when it comes into the choking and the cartridge, yes. Um, down the line, I believe it's a 28 gram discipline. Okay. I haven't shot it recently, but um, I'll look at doing it soon. Um, but when it comes to the 24 gram stuff, so the Olympic disciplines, all Olympic disciplines are 24 gram. Um, so for us, we've got less lead um, than a standard sporting or down the line shooter, and we tend to use tighter oh. chokes. Um, so our first shot is around 
33 meters, between 28 and 33, depending how quick you are to the target. So for me and my pattern choke it, and my pattern testing and chokes and ballistics, um, I tend to shoot three quarter choke. So I know I've got a nice tight pattern. And if I miss, I know it's me missing, not necessarily the gun. Um, I have seen a book of excuses that I do tend to use, but I like to blame myself every now and again as well. Barrel length, 32, 30? Um, yeah, again, it's a personal thing. Um, most trap shooters I know shoot 30 inch, just because when you do get a big 45 degree angled target, you want to um, get on it a little bit quick, because if you have, um, well, I, we roughly shoot our first target um, 0.5 to 0.7 seconds. If you delay it by 0.2 or 0.3 of a second, that's another between 8 to 12 meters. So, yeah, again, if you go and test your ballistic side of things, um, it can be a lot further out and there's a few more holes in it then. Okay. In terms of shooting yourself, um, is a routine essential? I would say it's beneficial. Essential, no. If you're coming to have a go um, and get into the sport, um, you don't need to have a big, really um, in-depth pre-shot routine. But when it comes to the technical ability of coming down, as long as you're holding on the mark with your eyes slightly above, it's a perfect starting point to get you going. Everyone's different. Um, I know there's lots of different shooters, especially when it goes on to the international scene. They've been shooting it for years and years and they've tailored their um, technical um, routine. Um, to suit them, but as a starting point, you want to start on the mark, eyes slightly above, and go straight to the target. Pull the trigger and keep the gun going. Do not stop the gun. So a nice smooth motion to the target. Pull the trigger when you get to it and keep the gun going. Excellent, fantastic advice. And that is a brief introduction to Olympic trap shooting. My thanks to Steve for his input today. On the next episode, I'll be going through how to shoot Olympic trap targets. <laughs>